Um, I am Dan Passerelli, and we are going to talk today about finding untapped sources of income in the options market. Now, before we get started, I need to point out that options are not for everyone. You should read characteristics and risks of standardized options before trading, and you can get a copy of that by calling 1-888-OPTIONS. Okay. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Here's what I'm going to reveal to you today. How to generate consistent, predictable income, the three analyses you need to set up winning trades, and how to avoid common income trade traps. Now, I am here to tell you that all traders make mistakes. I've never met somebody who has had 100% winning trades. Anybody tells you that, they're just plain lying to you. Uh, I've been in this business a long, long time. There's me. I don't look like that anymore. That was a terrible haircut. Um, that's one mistake I could have learned from for sure. But when I was down on the trading floor, you know, all my trades weren't winners. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't have had a long and, you know, successful career if, uh, you know, I didn't make money in the long run. But every single trade I made wasn't a winner. So there's no point in beating yourself up. When you have losers, that's really not what the name of the game is. And even now, this is a little bit more of a modern picture of me. Uh, you know, even now when I'm on uh, Bloomberg or, or Fox Business News or whatever it is, they'll ask me for a trade idea and every once in a while I get one of those wrong too. So no matter how long you've been trading, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. But that's okay, especially in option trading, because option trading is not about predicting the underlying stock price. You don't have to predict it. What option trading is about is using quantifiable statistics to measure um, and predict potential profits to optimize risk reward. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about this, what we're going to talk about today. The strategies we're going to talk about today are tried and true. I've been using these strategies. I use them down on the trading floor two decades ago. <clears throat> I use them still to this day. Uh, me and John, uh, John is, um, well, if you look on the right-hand side, John's the guy in the blue shirt. I'm the guy in the plaid shirt. That's us. We get invited uh, by exchanges and brokerage firms all over the world, literally. This was when we were giving a presentation in China. Uh, what was that, last year, the year before, um, to some executives at exchanges and brokerage firms. And the strategies we're going to talk about today are the same ones that I taught there. I, taught, I teach them internationally to beginners, to intermediate, to advanced students. I use them myself, and they work. So here's a quote I came, from, uh, I came by that uh, has kind of stuck with me. <clears throat> it says, I will tell you how to get rich. Close the doors. Be fearful when others are greedy. Be greedy when others are fearful. Now, I don't know if Warren Buffett was talking about options, but if you're an option trader, that one rings true, especially when it comes to income trading. Income trades are a family of option strategies that benefit from time passing. As time passes, options lose their value, all else held constant. Yes, if the underlying goes up or down, underlying stock goes up or down, you can make or lose money. Yes, true. But that being held constant, options are a decaying asset. They lose their value as time passes. So that enables traders to put something on their side, put time on their side. In this regard, we can find a way to sell high now and buy low because we know that as long as the underlying stock doesn't move dreadfully against us, these options are going to decline in value. So we've got, we've got time decay working in our favor. So are we, am I saying, hey, look, I can predict where the stock is going. No, I can't predict where the stock is going. Neither can you. Neither can anybody. But you know what? You don't have to. If you're putting statistics on your side, you're putting time decay on your side, you're trading smarter, not pretending to be some sort of clairvoyant. Okay, so one of the main ways we can trade income trades is with credit spreads. Um, there's two types of credit spreads, call credit spreads and put credit spreads. 
Uh, call credit spreads are when I sell a call typically out of the money, so above a strike price above where the current stock is trading. And then I buy a higher strike call, which is farther out of the money. Now I'm selling the one that has more value, thus I'm actually taking in option premium, which is why we call it a credit spread. Now we also have put credit spread, which is where I sell a put typically out of the money, which means the strike price is below the current stock price. And then I buy a lower strike put in the same expiration cycle. Now with both of these, I'm taking in a credit, with both of these, I'm selling one option, I'm buying a farther out of the money option. Buying one, selling the other. <clears throat> so think of it as each of these options in each of these spreads has their own role, right? They each have a job to do. The short option is where you're gonna make or lose your money, okay? So that's the trade. The long option is the insurance policy because some people, if you've been trading long enough, I mean, a lot of people haven't seen this for a few years, but there was a time where people would sell naked puts. Those have been working out pretty swimmingly since 2009. But prior to that, I knew people who sold naked puts. And you know what happened? Every once in a while, they would lose their shirt. They'd make money for six months, think, hey, I can't lose at this. And then the market craps out. And guess what? They lose six months worth of profit. So this is a way to basically do the same thing, to sell options, but to sell them with protection. And in doing so, a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, why would I do that? Why would I waste my money on this insurance that I might not need? I make less if I'm spending money on this insurance policy. I'd rather just take my chances. Well, for investors, I think that's fine. Investors who hope to actually get assigned and, and actually want to buy the underline. But if you don't want to buy the underline, here's what you can do. You can still sell those same options, but sell twice as many of them. Sell three times as many of them, but buy the insurance policy. Do the spread instead. Therefore, you can possibly make more money by trading the spread. Not less money, but more money. Because you're taking on so much less risk, you're tying up less margins, so you'll have more capital to trade, and your profits can be higher. More frequent winners, bigger winners, and smaller losers. That's, again, the theme of this presentation, putting statistics on your side, right? We're trading smart. All right, so here's an here's a example of a... Uh, of a trade, this is a trade we actually talked about in our group coaching class. Uh, it was in Mobileye, <clears throat> symbol MBLY, and Mobileye had uh, some support established, as you can see here, right? So we got a support line, and I'm gonna jump right to the trade that John talked about in our coaching class. <clears throat> he talked about selling the 45 and a half puts at 45 cents and buying the 43 and a half puts at 15 cents. So we're selling a $2 wide spread, taking in 30 cents. All right. So why might that have been a good trade? <clears throat> well, look, because with Mobileye at 47.38, if we sold the 45 and a half puts, bought the 43 and a half puts, and let's assume that we held that position all the way until expiration, okay? We hold both of those options all the way until expiration. Well, who knows where the underlying uh, stock is gonna be? Could be anywhere. So let's explore the permutations, what could happen? What if Mobileye went up? It went up from 47.38. Well, guess what? Both of those options would expire and they'd be gone. They wouldn't exist anymore, but the 30 cents that we collected when we sold it is still ours. And now it's ours to keep. We can't lose if the options have expired. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now, what if <clears throat> Mobileye would have just kind of stayed where it was? Stayed right around 47.38. Well, guess what? Both of those puts are still out of the money. Winner. Okay. What if Mobileye would have went down? Well, if it would have went down a little bit, all the way down to 45 and a half, I'd still have winner. In fact, I'd still reach my maximum profit. 
only if it falls below the break-even price, which in this case is $45.20, which we find by taking 45 and a half minus the 30 cent credit we received, that's our break-even point. Only if it falls below $45.20 do we have a loser. <clears throat> so wait, if it goes up, we win. If it stays the same, we win. If it goes down a little, we win. If it goes down a lot, we lose. This, by nature, is a high probability trade. Remember when you were in high school or college and you learned about bell curves? Well, stock prices are almost distributed in a bell curve. Technically, it's a log normal distribution, and technically, technically, it's a log normal distribution with what they call leptokurtosis, but uh, we don't need to get too fancy right now. Just picture a bell curve in your head. What that means is that your chances of winning on a trade like this are much greater than your chances of losing. So I don't have to be good at predicting anything. I just have to be clever. I just have to structure trades that are set up in such a way <clears throat> where the permutations of what can happen, more, more of them than not, lead to me being a winner. Using simple statistics, using very simple numbers. And I just showed you exactly how to do it. So the most I can make is 30 cents on this if all the options expire. That's my credit received is the maximum gain. I can lose $1.70. If there's a big, huge, gigantic move lower and Mobileye was below 43 and a half at expiration, I'd lost the difference between the two strike prices minus the credit received. All right, and I told you about how to calculate a break even. So that's that's basically everything you know in order to understand the spread. Now let's. Uh, now I'm going to show you exactly how to set up a trade like this, so that you can do it yourself. Here's the setup. <clears throat> We're going to start with direction. We're going to start with looking at a stock chart or ETF chart. You know, we can even do these on futures. And we're going to find a stock, or whatever the underlying is, that has hit support or resistance and bounced off, preferably two, three, four times. Preferably, preferably on multiple time frames. <clears throat> then we're going to use the support and resistance line to set the potential short options strike. Now that's key. These trades are by their very nature high probability trades because the permutations of what can happen mean that statistics mean it's more likely we win than lose. When we add to that, on top of that, use support and resistance, we further increase our odds of winning. Why? Well, what does support mean? Support is an area on a chart where the stock hit a hard time falling below. If we set our short strike and we want the option, both of the options, to expire worthless, if both of our puts are below that support line and the support line holds, then the options will expire. So this is even something above and beyond what statistics give us, what the numbers give us. This is adding one more thing to our, to our strength of our trade. Now the third thing we're gonna add to the strength of our trade, and this is probably the most important thing. Volatility. We're going to use volatility as a screen. I bet many of you guys use uh, various technical indicators or something as a screen. Common ones are like ADX and um, <clears throat> RSI. You know, a lot of people use those as screens for momentum trades. We got a different type of screen when it comes to option trading. We're going to use volatility. And this is a binary event. Volatility is either expensive or cheap. Now, if you're pretty new to options, that might seem a little foreign and strange sounding. How can volatility be cheap or expensive? Volatility is basically the option in the options nomenclature, a word for how cheap or expensive options are because people buy or sell options based on expectations for future volatility, whether directly if they're a professional volatility arbitrageur or indirectly just by saying, hey, you know, I'm kind of nervous that, uh, you know, the market's looking shaky, I think I'm gonna buy puts. You know, that's making a decision to buy or sell options based on your expectations for volatility. Maybe not in a real quantifiable way, but in a conceptual way. <clears throat> so 
when the market collectively expects volatility to be high in the future, option prices tend to rise. Now, that's a little bit of a generalization. We can nitpick that, and, and there's some important things to nitpick on there. But if you're real new to options, that's a good way to think about it. So we only want to do this if volatility is elevated and, and too expensive. I'm going to show you how to figure that out in just a minute. Because we're selling options, if options are overpriced, then we should sell them. I mean, if anything is overpriced, we should sell them, right? When things are underpriced, we want to buy them. So we're using the same concept that we use in our everyday life. I mean, when we go to the grocery store, when we go to buy a car, when we go to buy anything, we want to buy it when it's cheap. Here, same concept. We want to sell when it's expensive. Uh, can, can people not see my screen? Oh, okay, I guess somebody can. All right. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> I'm going to give you one more little handy dandy tool. This is how to measure your exact probability of success. Now, holy cow. This is a useful tool. <clears throat> now, this isn't one of those tools where some people say, oh, yeah, we have 90% winning trades. You know, trust me. And then you try it, and you don't have 90% winning trades. You have like 20% winning trades. This is not that. This is not me saying, oh, this is a great system, and you're going to have X% percent winners. This is a tool where you can actually choose different options and look at the options delta, and it will tell you a great estimate of what the likelihood of you making money is. Because what, what is delta? And delta has a few definitions. So I'm going to focus on what we call the trader's definition. The trader's definition is delta is the probability of an option expiring in the money. Now, we want these options to expire out of the money. Right? <clears throat> Still a little bit of an over, oversimplification. We'd probably want to buy them back before expiration, but we can talk about that later if we have time. We want these options to expire out of the money. That's the concept. So wait a minute. How does knowing if the option, what the probability of an option expiring in the money, how does that help us? Well, easy. If it's in the money, it's not out of the money. If it's out of the money, it's not in the money. So we know that if and out of the money, say call or put, in this case it's put actually, if the put has a 25 delta, that means it has a 25% chance of being in the money at expiration. So therefore it has a 75% chance of being out of the money at expiration. And if it's out of the money at expiration, I reach my maximum profit potential. So all I have to do is look at the options delta and it tells me what my percentage chance of reaching my maximum profit potential is. Now, that's a rule of thumb. It's not 100% mathematically accurate, but every professional trader I know, and I know a lot of professional traders, use that. All right, so let's get back to our put credit spread here. <clears throat> With mobile line at 47.38, like we can easily rationalize like we did and just think of like a bell curve and say, oh, well, obviously, you know, of the events that can happen, it's much more likely that I make money than lose money, but this tells me exactly how likely it is. The put has a 25 delta, so I know that I have a 75% chance, oops, of reaching a maximum profit. Handy little tool. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about the criteria of income trades here. Um, we talked about looking at the chart to find support and resistance. Uh, what we didn't talk about yet is fundamentals. Now, fundamentals can be intimidating. You know, oh, do I have to use, you know, quick ratio and look at uh, financial statements and read the balance sheets? Oh, geez, you know, I flunked accounting in high school or college or whatever. Uh, I'm never going to be able to do No, you don't need that. You don't need all that fancy stuff. Fundamental analysis for option traders means look at the news, see when the scheduled volatility events are. What does that mean? What are scheduled volatility events? Well, earnings, if we're talking about stocks, 
They're scheduled once a quarter, typically, right? <clears throat> well, if you look at some stocks, probably most stocks, earnings day can be the, the biggest move of the quarter. That's when stocks can move a lot. So we don't want to be putting on income trades, credit spreads, going into earnings. That's no bueno. Uh, we want to make sure the expiration date of any options we're considering are before earnings. And if they are, then we're good. So it's another little screen. And then we got to do the volatility comparison. Now let's talk about that. As far as volatility events, we try and avoid it. But we're also going to look at a volatility chart. And you're going to get your crash, crash course in this now. I'm showing you literally everything that our head coach, John, shows you in class every single day. Or, you know, not you, unless you're our student already. But our students, John, John gives our students 10 trade ideas every single day. And I'm showing you the exact methodology that he uses every day in that class. Now, <clears throat> there's two lines here that we're looking at. There's the red line, which is implied volatility, and the grayish line that is historical volatility. Historical volatility is exactly what you think of when you think of volatility. Does the stock whip around a lot? Okay, then it's volatile. Does the stock trade pretty sideways? Okay, then it's not volatile. That's what it, historical volatility measures. It measures the magnitude of the moves that the stock has experienced in recent past, in this case, the last 30 days. And they simply annualize the figure to make that 30 days representative of a one-year period. The red line is that volatility that I was talking about, that option trader volatility. <clears throat> the word that basically means how cheap or expensive options are. We need to conduct, well, for simplicity, I'll say two analyses. It's really more than that, but um, for simplicity, I'll say two analyses. First of all, we want to see the red line, today's red line, all the way on the right, where my arrow is. I want to see that in the top half of the six-month range. <clears throat> And uh, it's probably right in the middle of the six-month range, maybe a little bit in the top half, which is fine. Ideally, we want it in the top half of the six-month range. Now, that's a rule that can be broken under some circumstances. You don't want to be breaking it universally, but it can be broken under some circumstances. We also want to see the red line today above the gray line. We want to see implied volatility to be higher than historical volatility. Now, there's a little bit more to it, but if you start out with those two premises, 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 uh, you're going to be beating half the traders out there. All right? You're only going to put on a credit spread if the red line's in the top half of the six month range and it is above historical volatility. <laughs> now, what leads to a profit? Well, here's what leads to a profit. Direction can lead to a profit, or a loss for that matter. Um, if the underlying goes through my break-even point, I can lose. Probabilities of that happening are low, but it happens sometimes, right? Unlikely events happen all the time. Not very, not all the time. Otherwise, they wouldn't be unlikely events. But I mean, you know, unlikely events do happen, so we have to worry about that. <clears throat> now, we've got a ton of techniques called adjustments, where if the underlying does go through the break-even point, we we can potentially fix it. We can repair that. But time is, or um, direction is one of the things we need to worry about. Now, time is always on our side. Time will always lead to a to uh, to something beneficial for us. And then volatility. Volatility can change. If I sell this credit spread when volatility is high and volatility falls, I can actually make a profit in the short term on volatility changes. So now what's unique about options, what's unique about uh, how we have to think about options, 
is that there's actually three different things we need to worry about. I like to tell my students, think of it as like every time you put on an option position, you're actually trading three different things. It's like a basket of, of securities. You're trading time. You always have a position in time. You will make or lose money based on time. In this case, make money. You will also make or lose money based on direction. You will also make or lose money based on volatility. <clears throat> so you need the profits from, you know, one or two or three of these to outweigh the losses from the other ones. So even though time's always on our side, that can be thwarted, particularly by direction. So ideally, we want to set ourselves up in a situation where all these are working for us. And the methodology I just laid out to you does exactly that. You, you're focusing on profiting from each of these. <clears throat> Time, because we're selling options. Direction, because we're using support and resistance and putting that in our favor, boosting our chances of success. And using volatility and selling options that are overpriced, therefore our theta is higher, it's our Greek that measures our time decay. And if implied volatility changes, we can make money on vega, which is the Greek that measures sensitivity of the position to implied volatility changes. <laughs> so this methodology is solid. It works, it's time tested, we show our students this methodology every single day in class. Um, and it's our most popular class because we're given a solid methodology every day. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. There we go. I'm gonna open this up to questions. Uh, actually, I'm gonna open this up to questions in just a minute. So go ahead and you can start typing in your questions. But I kind of want to continue down this thought process here. How often can you find great income trades? I mean, I just laid out a trade, and this trade in hindsight, if one of our students would have put this trade on, they would have made money. It would have worked. <clears throat> Is this the only trade we ever found that uh, you know was a great income trade where we put all the operative forces in our favor? No. You can find these all the time. Our group coaching classes every day. John mentioned about 10 trade ideas today. Some market periods are better than others. That's true. But you can still find these every day. They're simple steps. Look for foreign resistance, use volatility, and avoid earnings. <clears throat> now, let me tell you. I've been, uh, as Renee said, I've, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been op in options for since 1993. Uh, traded on the two most important exchange uh, uh, derivatives exchanges in the world. And so now I'm, I get to have the opportunity to give back to the trading community. The trading community was very, very good to me. And so I spend most of my time teaching. I mean, I trade too, you know, but I enjoy teaching. And I've earned the right to do what I want, you know. On the left here, this is me and my family. We're we enjoy traveling. We do a lot of traveling. Uh, I know some people do more who travel for business, but I do a lot of traveling. Close to 300,000, I think probably all the airlines over 300,000 miles. But, um, I play in a band. I like to spend lots of money on guitars and fun stuff like that. And why? Because you know what? Because I put in my time to learn how to trade and became successful at it. Now, you put in your time here. You're watching my part of the presentation. You're probably watching uh, some of the other uh, folks present today. You're putting in your time. And kudos to you. That's fantastic. The more you learn, the more you are. <clears throat> today, I showed you how to generate consistent, predictable income. I showed you the three analyses you need to set up winning trades and talked about some things that could go wrong and avoid uh, common income traps. Uh, we only have a 45 minute class here today for my section. So I didn't have time to show you everything that I possibly could. But I'll tell you what, I showed you almost everything I possibly could. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't show you how to scan for trades, how to select the optimal strikes and expirations, which is very important. 
uh, which uh, we only talked about credit spreads. We I could only focus on one, otherwise, you know, we'd just be too scatterbrained. And I mentioned adjusting. Uh, that's important as well. Now I told you, I'll tell you how to become rich. Close the doors. Be fearful when others are greedy. Greedy when others are fearful. We want you to take from the market and not get taken by it. Let's talk about how to make money right now from the market. <clears throat> Simple process that I'm going to share with you. I, I believe that anyone can take money from the market consistently and with low risk. And why do I believe that? I work with literally thousands of traders every single year and I train them John trains them <clears throat> we see what people are doing oftentimes people come to us say I've been trying this for five years I haven't made any money can you help me and we get them in our class the only problem is that most people overcomplicate it really that's the big problem is that most people overcomplicate it. So we started a class uh, many years ago now called the Market Taker Live Advantage Group Coaching Class. It's, it's what I mentioned before. It's the one that John teaches. It's every single day. And in that class, we're going to share with you all the techniques we use at MGM to set up credit spreads, time spreads, iron condors, butterflies, double calendars, and more, much more. So you can stop guessing and risking your hard-earned money on bound fail trades. And so you can generate consistent low-risk income with a high probability of winning. So we're going to talk about how to scan the market for income trades, how to select optimal strikes, maximize probability of success. This, this class is everything you need to know to be successful and to take your trading to the next level. It's a, this, is, this is an opportunity to avoid the common mistakes of novice traders to maximize your profits and chances of success while minimizing your risk. So who's this class for? <clears throat> it's for traders who want more consistency in your trading, for traders who want more frequent winners. Setting up high probability trades, you will have much more winners than losers. Traders who can follow a few simple steps and believe their success is tied to following a simple methodology, and it is simple. This is not for get rich quick guys. This is not for uh, analysis paralysis people, people who can't make a decision, you're indecisive. If you're indecisive, I mean, you're, you know, you're probably not gonna make a very good trader if you're indecisive, but this is, would not be a good class for you. You can't make up your mind. And it, this is not a Band-Aid solution. Can you get rich by being an option trader? Absolutely. I know a whole bunch of people who have, but this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is to teach you to take your finances into your own hands and potentially make great money. Now, a couple questions about this class. All videos are on demand. Uh, the live component is recorded. So it, it's basically a live class every single day at nine o'clock central time. It's 10 Eastern. It goes for one hour. In that class, John gives you 10 trade ideas. Now, about half the people who sign up for this class actually never attend a live class. It's not convenient for them. So they watch the recordings. The recording comes out within a couple hours of the class. You don't need any special software. If you're watching this webinar, we actually use GoToWebinar for, for that class too. So if you are in this class, you've got everything you need. If you've got a, a brokerage account, great. You don't have to have any specific brokerage account, any software, nothing like that. You've got what you need. This class is good for ETFs, stocks, uh, commodities, anything optional, holders. You know, when I told you, John and I were invited by the Chinese government out there to train uh, their executives at options exchanges and brokerage firms. We're teaching them the same thing, and they're training them on Chinese stocks and futures. Uh, this class is an hour a day, every single day. And you get access to the recordings from the past three weeks. And we're going to throw in some great bonuses. So when does this class start? It starts tomorrow. The first day of the rest of your life is tomorrow. I'm actually going to show you how to get a great trial price on this class. And tomorrow morning you'll be in the class and you're going to get 10 trade ideas a day. Plus, in addition to the one month of group coaching, 
We're gonna throw in the options impact videos. Those of you who are brand new to options, those are eight videos that cover just the basics. And then we're also gonna throw in the email hotline, which we sell for $1,000 on our website. That's great if you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, or if you're advanced. I don't care how advanced you are. You get to ask questions every single day, anytime you want. Unlimited email access to us. It's email coaching. That comes with this. So this is an $1,800 package, but today, if you go to markettaker.com slash GC49, that's markettaker.com slash GC49, we're gonna let you into this class for 49 bucks. 49 bucks for one full month of getting 10 trade ideas a day from John, who used to work at Goldman Sachs. He's exactly the kind of person you wanna to listen to. All the recordings, the options impact videos, and the email hotline, this is an $1,800 package for 49 bucks. As soon as you get into this class, you're gonna get an email, oops, you're gonna get an email sent to you. Sorry, this is all you need. As soon as you get into this class, you're gonna get an email sent to you uh, with a username and password, and you can start watching the recording of today's class right now. And you can start watching the options impact videos and using the hotline. Um, now, uh, I said I was gonna take some questions. <clears throat> and we do have a question from Nick. Nick said, you said option delta helps measure probability. Which one, the long or short option of the credit spread? Thanks. Great question, Nick. The short one. The short one is the important one. Remember, I said the short option is the trade, and the long option is just the insurance policy. So you, if that short option expires, they both, they both expire. So use the delta the short option. Now I still got a couple of minutes for a couple of questions. If anybody has any questions about uh, this trial, markettaker.com slash GC49, um, or about anything we covered in the class, I'd be very, very happy to entertain those questions. <clears throat> um, just go down to where it says questions, type it in. A lot of times I get questions about, you know, markettaker.com slash GC49, like what does the class cover? You know, what the class does cover is it covers 10 trade ideas a day, actionable trade ideas a day. And John explains exactly what he's looking for, why he's looking for it, shows you step by step how to set up these trades. Really, the class is, is designed to be earn while you learn. What does that mean? That means yeah, it's the same idea as give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man a fish, he eats for life, right? Well, you're getting fish every day, but you're also learning how to fish. So it's, it's real hands-on training, and you can potentially make money while you're learning. And it also covers lots and lots of different strategies. All we really had time to do to talk about today is credit spreads. But it covers, uh, you know, time spreads. It covers, it covers everything. Whoops. There we go. Uh, TJ says, how important is technical analysis to option tra trading? TJ, it's pretty important. Um, <clears throat> technical analysis is basically a map of human behavior. I mean, most people don't think about it that way. But it shows you basically what, especially the big money was doing. If the underlying goes up, why did it go up? Well, you know, if the stock goes up, it went up because people bought it. It's called supply and demand. You learned about it in high school. Um, if the stock goes down, it's because people are selling it. So it's a map of what people have been doing, what people would big money have been doing. And so we use it to further put the odds on our side. Does technical analysis predict the future? Of course not. But technical analysis does tell us what people have been doing. And so we can learn from that, and we can use especially support and resistance to help us make good decisions about the future. Uh, let's see here. Uh, R says, how long do you find 
generally is it before arbitrage from competitor trades uh, takes away option volatility pricing advantages? Yeah, good question. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it used to be five years ago, and even more so 10 years ago, and even more so 20 years ago, where volatility was really out of whack, and you could really use volatility extremely to your advantage. Now, because of dispersion model trading firms and um, that kind of thing, the volatility edge is smaller, but it's still there. It's still there every single day. I could sit down with you and I bet I could find 50 option trades that have a, a favorable volatility. If they're too expensive, we do things like credit spreads. If it's too cheap, you might do an option buying strategy. <clears throat> so they're out there. In fact, typically, statistically, implied volatility is generally still too high in the long run. Uh, Janky says, what time does the class start? The class starts at um, 9 a.m. Central Time, and it goes for an hour. That's 10 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 7 a.m. Pacific Time every single day. Um, R says, how do you define support and resistance? Two recent touches at a horizontal level? Yes, I'm glad you put the word horizontal in there. Uh, diagonally sloping um, pivot lines or trend lines, if you will, are not as relevant as horizontal lines. Because if every time the underlying got down to say 50 bucks and it went higher, that means that there's probably some professional trader out there whose model says buy it at 50. And so that means horizontal lines are much more. So uh, thank you. I heard my uh, machine going in the background. I can see we have some uh, new students who took us up on this offer. Great. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, and I am out of time.